What's up, everybody, and welcome to the latest edition of the Falcons in Focus podcast presented by Ticketmaster, recorded in the Ticketmaster studios. I'm Scott Bear. That's Troy McElhaney, man of the hour. I, I can use your real name now, Tyler Algier, yeah. a.k.a. Psycho T, mm -hmm. a.k.a. the franchise record holder for rookie rushing yards. Mm -hmm. um, apparently, you also had 5,000 rushing yards in high school and 56 rushing touchdowns mm -hmm. for Kaiser. I guess. So all those uh, accolades, things, yeah. Accolades are meant to say uh, Tyler's pretty good at what he does. Mm -hmm. So definitely wanted to have you on the program before you started your second season. And we wanted to start with a very important question. For this you. is, and I'll preface this question by saying this, this is, is mostly question, Desmond Ritter's fault. This is a question <sighs> that we have had for months. And yeah. I, we've been saving it specifically for this podcast. Mm -hmm. All right, let's hear it. Okay. <clears throat> so it's, it's not, it's common to know that that you like bowling, right? Mm -hmm. And you're a pretty good bowler. Um, what Desmond brought up in that very chair was that you own a bowling ball. Which in and of itself is not weird. A lot of people no. own bowling balls. A lot of people. Yeah. yeah. But yours pretty common. has a blueberry scent to it. It does. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. I have so many okay. questions about this. Oh, yeah. Origin story, please. All right, so shout out to Miracle Bowl. <laughs> that was, uh, so NIL first came out, then they gave me uh, they gave me the ball, and then they gave me the shoes. So fitted for the ball, gave me the shoes, and then um, they said, "Yeah, it smells like blueberries." I said, "All right," and then got a whiff. Every time I every time I go, get a whiff of it, it gives me strikes. So, so it's now part of, of the routine. As the <laughs> ball comes up, the blueberry relax. Oh yeah. Throw. Oh yeah. No, it's great. Wow. Yeah, because I, I was never like a a spinner. Yeah. I was more like straight, but then. After getting the ball, that's when I kept practicing spin, spin. So now I'm pretty, pretty decent at it. The, I have so I'm many so questions. I'm glad that it's true. I know. I'm glad that it's true. I'm also glad to know that it does actually smell like blueberries because when Des said that, I was like, "You're lying, man. That it's probably just blue." I have, to, you, I have to bring it in some. No, you do because I need to now. I need to now experience it. Were the, did they give you options as to what it could smell like, or what, and you picked blueberry, or was it like here's a blueberry bowling ball? <laughs> here's a blueberry bowling ball. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. probably blue like BYU. That was probably the connection, maybe. It, it could have been. Okay, we'll say. <laughs> it it, we'll it could have yeah. been. We'll, okay. we'll, we'll just say we'll that. Go, yeah, we'll say that. That we'll say that's what it is. Yeah. Right. So this seems like a natural nil connection in general because bowling is a thing that. Like, have you done it for a while? Did you do it when you? Yeah. Were how a kid? did you get into bowling? Um, I did it when I was a kid. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I grew up, grew up going bowling and stuff. So. And then it, it kinda... sort of moved forward into like, Tyler, Drake, Des, John Fitzpatrick bowling league. Or maybe that's too far, but <laughs> no, you guys. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, we we went a couple times and stuff. Yeah. yeah. That was Talking something. Crap to each other. I was about to say that was something that I remember when y'all were first here, and I think all of y'all were rooming together that mm. rookie mini camp when y'all first got here and that was something that I can't remember if it was Drake or somebody said you know that's how we bonded like kind of early on yeah. um, out of the four of y'all please rank best to worst because <laughs> I want to match this up with what, what Des said when he was in here I mean you have Once to be the best right you have your own bowling ball. <laughs> I have my days. <laughs> that, that day wasn't good. But if I do have a day, uh, I'll go me. Okay. Uh, I'll go me, Dez, Drake, and Fitz. Okay. Solid. That sounds like how a does, good... How does that match? I'm pretty sure I Dez... Think that's yeah, I think Dez said that he was the best, which... Well, I mean, of course I think, he did. 50-50. Right. Yeah. Depends on the day. Right. <laughs> And the lanes. <laughs> and the lanes, right. We need to be old, like, appropriately. Like, we definitely have to get... Appropriately slick, appropriately <laughs> dry. It's like, it's give, or, give or take. Right. Give or so take. I think if we're going to name the bowling team, we could call them, like, the, like, Blueberry Bombers or something oh, like that. Oh, that's cute. You know, and so kind of in extension of that, right, it's always kind of interesting to me. So you're, you're drafted, you fly across the country, and then you're in a dorm with, three people who maybe you waved at, at at the combine possibly or something like that but to kind of get in there and it's a bunch of new people it's a draft class and you're all kind of getting to know each other like what's those first couple days like because you're getting to know people who are now really good friends of yours yeah shoot to be honest so me and Drake share the same industry so I ended up okay. being with him or met him once 
So we played against each other, but I didn't really know. You know, mm-hmm. we we won that game. <laughs> <laughs> One of the last games of the season, we won that game. Shout out USC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that was that was that was a good one. Um, but then I actually passed Dez during combine. I was like, oh, that's him. But then just went all <laughs> that's that guy. Oh, so that's oh yeah, that's Cincinnati's finest. <laughs> <laughs> just went on all my day. But then actually, um, rooming with the guys, like really just getting out of my comfort zone and actually going out of my mm-hmm. or like not out of my way, but like all of us just really having the same goals and same aspirations wanting to get better and learn mm-hmm. the offense so kind of just like being able to just go towards them and gravitate mm-hmm. towards them to really just open up myself because i'm kind of a i've gotten better i've gotten better because yeah. i'm more of a sh- like in my shell mm-hmm. but i've gotten better trying to just like open i guess get out get out of my shell basically right yeah go, take your uh like, take initiative i guess yeah, yeah there you yeah. go yeah because i think i have introverted tendencies as well and oh, sometimes yeah. it takes like people to to get me out of that yeah, and no, i feel exactly. like des and drake and john were they that for you too yeah 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 so it was good yeah and it's from from talking to uh Bajan robinson yesterday two days ago a couple days ago uh, yeah it sounds like you guys have bonded over anime we have yeah and apparently he's real into it he actually had a character that best described yeah you. he said that uh, this is the type of hard-hitting stuff that we deal with here mm-hmm. on falcons of focus so what he said is that he would compare you and him to the character baki see do you agree or disagree and if you're comparing anime characters who are you comparing to okay fir- first question is do you agree with Bajan's assessment? See, I haven't seen Baki, so oh, okay, oh, so okay. he has okay. a so, vision of a guy who like runs through the enemy. I think that's kind of the yeah. So I I have an idea of what Baki is like. It's uh-huh. a fine anime. Like I, I've seen memes about it, mm-hmm. but <laughs> I haven't actually seen it. Oh, okay, but he hasn't seen any of the mainstream ones mm. that I've seen. But he's seen like the low key. Kind of the you. indie ones or something like <laughs> the that. Indie yeah. anime. Yeah. 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 It's it's basically. Yeah. Basically. But um I wouldn't I, I mean sure. Sure. Uh-huh. If he if he because like I seen the memes and uh-huh. I, I guess so, maybe. Right. Yeah. It's like it could make sense. It could in sure. Bajan's head. Oh yeah. Yeah. But how Tyler... long how long have you been into anime? Like, is that something that also from a, from childhood you were like super into that, or was that a recent development? So as a kid, it was more I didn't really watch it. Like if it was on an Adult Swim, eight uh-huh. p- past ten p.m. Right, like, yeah. I wasn't really hooked crazy on it, mm-hmm. but it was more when I got into college. Um, when was it? I think I started grinding Naruto, and nice. that that's a grind. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'll tell you that. Yeah, Naruto's a grind. Like over a thousand episodes. Then, yeah, like know, it's, it's it's almost like every day, and like a saga will play out over weeks and weeks. It's oh, it's, yeah. it's a commitment. Yeah. That's impressive. You go Naruto and then Naruto Shippuden, which is another like 500, say 900 episodes, whatever. Oh, gosh. So it's kind of just that started and then I finished that one. But now I'm on the grind on One Piece. One that's, Piece. Uh, yeah. That's a grind. Yeah. That is a grind. I love that. Now, Going you close. also went to Japan this yes. off season. Tell us about that trip and, and what what you took out of going to Japan and, and kind of getting to experience that culture that culture was so it it was amazing yeah like it was crazy because like everything was just so clean like when you walk around no trash cans no trash cans like the only trash can do you see is like in like a 7-eleven and when you think of like america 7-eleven like oh yeah yeah. Yeah. but like over there is like that's where you go to get breakfast that's where you go to get your snacks like everything and then um what else just the culture in general it was just it was just so amazing everything was just so beautiful so many flicks so many pictures it was Mm -hmm. it was great what was food your was fire? Are you, what was oh it? Food. Gosh. That's Twenty dollar wagyu, all you can eat. Wow, that sounds <laughs> can't, awesome. Can't get better than that. <laughs> Are there any uh, kind of like? Was there a favorite moment or a good story that comes to mind about that trip? Hmm. We wanted to do the Mario Kart thing, but I heard you needed a the license. The Oh, international like, license. You need like international you need, license. You need like a like, permit. So this Mario Kart thing is basically like a go kart, but themed that way. Yeah, go kart, and you and they give you costumes to dress up like your Mario characters. That but sounds you couldn't do it because you need a international permit. <sighs> so, that is a real bummer. That is. Yeah. But I, I also think there's a really good yeah. marketing opportunity here if right. we could somehow bring it stateside. There is nothing oh, I God. want more than to what okay, if you were going to pick and you were going to do it, who is going to what character were you going to dress up as? 
they had Bowser Jr. I'm a fan of Bowser they, Jr. Okay, so. that makes that tracks. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, that's my guy. <laughs> that's my guy. Yeah, I'm a big Yoshi guy, and okay. my seven year old is Mario all the time. So Respectful. we could just get like a whole group together. Yeah, and uh, well, first I have to build the track and create. I, I needed to okay. get here now. Right, like I, that's what I need. So, what was, was that your first trip overseas? Are you a big traveler? First trip overseas. Yeah. Whoa! Actually, all, to go all the way to Japan on your first trip, oh, that's yeah. kind of crazy. It was the first one. Yeah, it was. It was crazy. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was a uh, it was a fun time though. It was a fun time. I'm trying to decide which where we want to go next, next off season. But there's a lot of time mm -hmm. to think about that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm gonna switch gears a little bit because we've been talking a lot about your interest as a person, but we also need to talk a little bit about football. But there's one specific thing that I wanted to ask about. I just saw this video today. I just told Scott about this play that you had that went viral while you were at BYU. I know you know what I'm talking about when you like ran ran down what the Arizona State linebacker. Play of the year. Play of uh -huh. the year. Like that yeah. was, I remember watching that, like not in real time because I wasn't watching that game in real time, but I remember like watching the highlights and it kind of being all over my Twitter feed for like a solid day. Please. So, yeah. So BYU's quarterback throws a pick. Yes. Yeah. Right? Explain it for and those then, who haven't seen it. And then Arizona State's linebacker takes off running. Mm hmm. And then, then you just see this, and like, then you see Tyler come around someone, and then all of a sudden he's right on the guy's back, and he puts a hand on one shoulder pad and does like a flying <laughs> Ryu from Street Fighter Two would be proud haymaker right on top of the ball breaks <laughs> out, and BYU gets the gets the ball right back. What are you thinking in that moment when you see the pick happening? You're like, it's go time. To be honest with you, once I saw the pick, it was just like. I gotta, I gotta get this guy down. Right. So like, it was more boom. I saw the pig. I, I was just sprinting. I was like, oh wow, I'm actually gonna catch him. Like he's slowing down, or unless I'm, I'm like in the moment, I'm just fast as hell. <laughs> so it was like, you just gotta go, go, go. And then I was like, let's take a shot. Let's take a shot. Like why not? No, why not? We yeah. already know I'm gonna get him down. Like right. he's not gonna make the touchdown. So why not? Then I end up running. Then it's just instincts, instincts of getting, trying to get the ball out. That was, the, and then just ended up getting it. Boom, and then great effort by Jaron. Yeah, he threw the yeah he threw the pick, but just his effort because he's the one that ended up recovering it after mm -hmm. after that nice little haymaker I made. So um, here's the the wild thing to me is everybody came up to you and they're like losing their minds. And I, according to the video I saw, you didn't celebrate at all. Not at you just all. like you you like did your thing. You saw that BYU got the ball back and he walked in. Everybody <laughs> kept trying to high five you and he just walked right to the sideline. Listen, I was trying to figure out what the hell just happened. <laughs> it was, but it was more I was tired too. So like, like even, yeah. even in my touchdowns, like I didn't really celebrate because I was just dog tired. So right, <laughs> but, but who knows though? But yeah, everyone tried to dab me up. It was just like I'm trying to catch my breath, but then just processing what happened. Like everyone, like on the sideline, like five minutes, like do you know? Do you do you know what you just did? I was like, no, bro. Like I'm. Just, we gotta win this game, <laughs> right? And, like, we, and, gotta, and we, you, we can celebrate it later, but and you just got possession for your offense back, so you probably have to catch your breath and go back out onto the field. Damn, that's right. It's like get <laughs> yeah. the oxygen tank immediately. Oh, yeah. Do you uh, do you remember kind of anything anybody said to you either in that moment or after that game about that play to be like, yo, man, like this is kind of blowing up a little bit? Um, I didn't realize it was blowing up mm -hmm. to be honest with you until like. I get like a bunch of tags, like, "Oh, do you know what this kid just yeah. did?" Yada yada. yada. And I was like, "Oh, that's cool." It's like cool. Yeah. That's great. Just do my job, man. Right? Shoot. Do you think that? Because uh, you actually, I don't know how much people know about this about you, but in 2019, they had you playing some linebacker too, mm -hmm. um, to go along with you're still playing running back as well. You're kind of doing a little bit of both at yeah. the time. How much <laughs> did that year of playing linebacker help you in that one singular moment of like, I have to make this tackle? <laughs> Damn, I would say um, <clears throat> did a lot of ball, like ball disruption drills. So mm -hmm. like, obviously that could that could play, but it was just more just instincts. Instinct, though. So really yeah. like all those reps at playing mm -hmm. linebacker and then playing linebacker in college or in high school as well. It was just more instincts. Like I knew, like especially running the ball, like I know like the weak points and stuff. So mm -hmm. like, especially a linebacker, they don't do ball security. Mm. So like, that's a plus for me, especially if I'm chasing them down. So like, what are the odds of, like, I already know he's not gonna have ball security. So what are the odds of me doing that and then doing it? So hitting it out. Yeah. And, happening. and you, you, your entire BYU experience, I mean, it's such a great story. Yeah. Um, I'm sure lots of people have heard about it. Stories like have been told, but to come from 
you know, Fontana in Southern California to be a preferred walk on mm -hmm. to get a scholarship. Like this is a cliff notes and then we'll <laughs> break it down. But you know, to then to get a scholarship, um, you know, after having to work odd jobs to, to pay the tuition and help your mom out, you know, like when, like when you, and we'll, we'll get into like specific stuff, but there's gotta be a real sense of pride for what you were able to do and accomplish during those years when you were in Provo. Oh, for sure. It was just like, cause like coming in as a walk or really coming out of high school, a lot of coaches said, Oh, like scouts. Oh, you're not like, he's too stiff. Like he's not going to make it in the next level. Like it's, so it was like nothing new. Like, but then me where you came and then uh, I went on my official visit and they offered me the preferred walk on spot. I thought I was going to get a scholarship. Did Aww. you? It was, it was, it was a, ah, just a little bit. It was, yeah. it was a hope. It was a hope, especially like not having to offer. It was late. Right. So it would have been like a late offer, but then it offered uh, the preferred walk on. And I ended up having another offer from a D2, but it was a half scholarship to mm. Southern Nazarene, I believe. And then it was just like when I went on to visit, it might sound a little cliche, but like I felt this, like felt like yo BYU to uh, LDS. Like I, I didn't know <laughs> what anything about BYU. I thought they were yo when they came, right? Like, respectively. <laughs> <laughs> you now know, don't you know, worry. Oh, no, for sure. And then, like, <laughs> but like when I got off the plane and then like just viewing the campus and stuff, like I really just felt the spirit. It was just mm -hmm. like sound like a little cliche, but like no, no, felt like it was like. It was, a, it was like the right spot for me. Then, then when my mom asked, like, do you really want to go? I was like, yeah, like I can, I'll do whatever I can to fork out the money. Just like, just promise me that you're going to work, like you're going to work hard. Like, but like, so that, that was always just a chip on my shoulder just to handle all of that. And then coming in as a preferred walk on, then getting a the scholarship, switching positions. Right. Yeah. Uh, switch, switching positions, then getting, the, and then switching back to running back, getting the scholarship then. And then shoot the story wrote itself. Mm -hmm. I think it's really the the role that your mom played in not just like that time, but kind of helping you get to where you are now. I think is such a it's it's such a powerful story. Of my favorite quote was every time I would read something from her when she's quoted on something, she mm -hmm. would say the same thing over and over, which was, "I'll make it work." Like she would say, "I'll make it work. I'll make it work." How much? looking back do you appreciate kind of what she was able to do for you even during that time yeah she's been doing that ever since i was a kid you know single mama too shout out to mama and stuff but yeah single mama too so like it was it was hard you know she did everything she can like we me and my sister were both in sports since we were kids so like she would just always want us to keep us busy and just put us in the right situation for us to be successful. And then she was always honest with school, academics. Like whenever we had under like a three point, really not, a, if it wasn't a 4.0, we're, like, we're, yeah. we're getting chewed out at. So like, <laughs> I remember I messed up, uh, I messed up in middle school. She was so disappointed. Oh my gosh. I was like, damn, I can't, <laughs> again. I can't do this again. <laughs> but then, um, yeah, just, she was just always like, she'll just make it work. She, for some reason, somehow she would always just, make it work and yeah. then but that always kind of just like especially me being the oldest to my sister it was just more i gotta set an example so if i'm doing great he'll hopefully push her and then she's actually just got a scholarship to prairie view texas oh mm -hmm. yeah so she's playing soccer right now oh, oh great cool. she's graduated, so. love that very cool so. I, you know I, I i always think like you can say thank you to somebody um, or you can perform an action that says thank you. And I think like you taking summers to like get a job at Walmart, Walmart and yeah. finding a way to get there without asking for rides, like that's kind of a way of sort of being like, you know, I thank you. I want to help kind of mm -hmm. shoulder this. Like it's not something that you have to do, right? You have career goals. You want to end up, you know, playing in the league for oh, yeah. a long time and, mm -hmm. It would be, in my opinion, very easy to say, I'm going to focus on doing that right. career opportunity and preparing for that. Why was it important to you to go ex to go the extra mile and, you know, try to help in any way that you could? Damn, because, like, obviously college, college is expensive, but, mm -hmm. like, it's just, like, after all, like, she sacrificed so much for me. Now it's more, let me help her out by just 
I hate I I hate asking for favors as well. Like whether yeah. it's teammates and stuff too. I don't know. I just feel like I don't want to be a burden. I guess. Mm-hmm. Like I know I know my teammates will obviously be always yeah. open and stuff, but it's just more. It, it's like it, it's like in you. Favors. Like I want to I want to do my part in this. Yeah. Do my role in this. Yeah. So it's more like me just trying to do that. Then I ended up doing uh. So I worked Walmart for us this summer, and then once football started, it it, it, it was super hard. I, yeah. so I can't football, imagine. Football, academics, yeah. BYU. Oh my god, the <laughs> academics are hard. But I still didn't graduate. But we're gonna we're gonna finish. We're gonna finish. Right? Yes, of course. We're gonna finish. I feel like your mom's like, she she's probably watching this. Like, yes, you're gonna finish. Oh no, hands down. Yeah, yeah. No hands down. We're for sure gonna finish. <laughs> but yeah. Do you? Uh, so I read something that like one of the jobs that you had while you're working at Walmart was you would go out and get the shopping carts. <laughs> Did you have a specific way that you would go and like what was your strategy to get the most shopping carts that you could back in the Walmart? Oh it seems gosh. hard because like once you like once it's a long line, it's not going to cooperate like with snake. you anymore. It's like mm-hmm. that that game on your phone, the snake game. Oh, the snake! Oh, the yeah. snake IO. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that one. <laughs> no, so like, are you are you are you thinking in your mind that I had like the actual cart thing, like yeah. the cart moving? No, you didn't have that. I didn't have you, that. It, it was, was just a, it was a neighborhood Walmart, so it's small. I had to put, I had to grab all the carts, and no rubber band or anything, right? And try to just navigate it. Wow, just all it manpower. Was, oh my gosh! After football practice, trying to do that for eight hours or whatever. Oh my. When your gosh. arms and legs are just shot, it's just like one of those things that I can barely even push my my own cart and not hit my own cart. No, I got so much respect for her because it's it, it's not a pleasant or like, mm-hmm. it's a res. You 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 got like you gotta respect the guy to yeah. everyone that does that because like you are getting carts from all over from mm-hmm. eight different sections and like you got people who will just put the cart in a bunch of different <laughs> places. So like I got a lot of respect for them. So like every time I see a car, I'm just like, let me just Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because like that's it's so I'm every pre- time unappreciated. You, so every yeah. time that you go to the grocery store <laughs> and you're done with it, your cart is going back in the back in the yes. Every yeah. single time. Oh yes, back inside the cart rack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's there. Absolutely has to. And let's also not forget that you're doing this job, even in the summer, you're still in Provo, Utah, right? It's right. still, yeah. it's not yeah. the warmest, sunniest place every single day of the yeah. year. Um, well, we did, uh, me and a couple boys did a trash, trash pickup job. Mm. 2019 or 20, 2020. Mm. Yeah. Pre-pandemic. pre pandemic pre Ooh. Or during the no, pandemic. During the pandemic. During because the pandemic. Pandemic happened when. It was like when spring, when spring was going on in March. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Damn. Dates. Did we do that? Dates and times. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. It's either 2019 in the spring or 2020. Yeah. But that was a leg workout too. Just grabbing like like the trash mm-hmm. valet pickups. Mm-hmm. Oh, so like just yeah. going around complexes, picking up the trash, putting them in the dumps or putting it in the bin. And then when the bin's full, going to go into the bin, taking out the put in the dumpster, then got to go back to the and just do it all. Yeah, it was like four different buildings, two complexes. Uh, the last it was big BYU experience <laughs> related thing, and I know I'm asking lots of deep questions. I swear it's the last one. Um, finally getting the scholarship. Yeah. Right. We we talk about everything that we've been talking about. I mean, I, I can't imagine just even just hearing the stories. Yeah. I, I can't imagine what that meant. Oh yeah, no, it was, it was um, it was a weight lifted because that was that was my main goal. Like, like coming into college, it was more I need to get this scholarship because I don't need my family paying or worrying about tuition and worrying about having to pay for that. So that was my goal for the past two years. And then once I got that goal, it was just like, oh my, like the weight just lifted off my shoulders. And then especially because like my mom wouldn't have to have any more debt mm-hmm. that she would have to pay and stuff. So it was like, okay, I checked that off. Now let's go to the next goal. Mm-hmm. And I was just balling out the rest of my, the rest of the years. And then the ne- like, obviously the next goal was to get to the NFL, but like you, I, you have to, you can't think too far ahead into the future sure. because like any, anything could happen, anything. Mm-hmm. So like, mm-hmm. that was kind of my mindset. You can't think so far into the future because you just got to take everything day by day. And like you'll hear me say it in the media as well. Like that's literally how, yeah. how I kind of like train myself. Cause like anything can happen. You just gotta like goods and bads. But like if you just take it day by day and just learn, then like everything else will play, play yeah. its play its part. I think that's important too because when I think back on kind of like this was something that as I was doing my research, it was like 
it felt like your story had like these like parallel moments where it's like you you are a preferred walk on at BYU and then you get a scholarship and I one of the quotes that I found was from I think your position coach that was kind of like he surprised us at, at, with what he could do and then I think you know you go into the NFL draft and it's like you're a fifth round pick and then you go in your first year and you have a record breaking year and it's like kind of surprised some people there too do you kind of feel like that is something that you hold on to as a source of like pride like I'm gonna go out here and I'm you know I'm gonna exceed expectations it's literally just making the most out of every opportunity that yeah. you get because like obviously being overlooked really just being the underdog every really every, my whole life been the underdog so it's kind of like you you would hope you like it's kind of like a I would say like like you said like a pride pride thing because like I like proving people wrong yeah. and that's always like a chip on my shoulder like obviously because like coming in as a high school people saying oh you're too stiff you're too slow yada yada and then proving them oh i went to college boom oh but he's not on a scholarship boom got the scholarship oh he he can't have two great he can't he can't ball out running back oh bought out now we're here oh he can't do what he can in the league oh okay mm -hmm. let me just show you let me just prove you wrong so now it's just keep proving people wrong like obviously block out the outside noise but now just just worry about myself and just balling and do what I can for the team and stuff I love, love that it. Um, I'm ready to run through a brick wall yeah I, I, I feel like that so it's at this point in the podcast we used to call it rapid fire but it's never very fast yeah. so we'll just say that we asked the same everybody in the chair roughly the same five questions okay. so we can get to those uh, your favorite the, the first is your favorite play of your career maybe we've already talked about it maybe we haven't um Hmm. Career it, as it can it don't be matter. NFL, it can yeah. be high school, it can be college. Whatever you want to talk about, we and we have had Damn. various uh, mm. answers on the on the pod. Mm. It's interesting too to see what people care about. Mm. Like, <laughs> like which I think it's kind of funny. Might have, have three of them then. Okay. okay. Number high one, high school. <laughs> Serrano, Kaiser versus Serrano was a playoff game. It was, it, it was intense. Awesome. Oh yeah, it was a crazy game. Yeah, we went into overtime. It was forfeit, maybe four. Run the ball, give it to Tyler. <laughs> end up scoring that play. No way. Oh yeah, end up scoring it. Then the defense made a stop. Game, and then we wow. lost the next round. Oh, wow. uh, you know you won. You won the playoff game though. So won the playoff game. So yeah. that's all that matters. Okay, um, college. College. I gotta say. BYU versus Virginia. That was a fun game. Super high scoring. It was like 60 something to 40, 50. Yeah. Yeah, it was a super high scoring game. I think I scored like five touchdowns. That's basically like a track meet. That, oh, yeah. It, it, it was <laughs> You're crazy. just running. It was crazy. <laughs> no, but that, it was just like the off, like we were, like our, our offense was just so on tune, like mm. receivers blocking, linemen doing their thing, tight ends, every, like it was just an offensive game. It yeah. was just like we could, like just keep, could like, do whatever you wanted yeah. to, essentially. No, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah and then now fun. NFL. Had to be my first one. First okay. time against Cincinnati. Because, like, uh, my grandpa was from Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. But he passed away from cancer two years or um, yeah, it might have been two or three years ago. Mm. But he ended up he, – but he's from Indiana. So having that touchdown and my whole family was there as well. So yeah. like, Oh, that's cool. That was uh, super special. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think, you, on like, on your cleats you always wrote uh, – Oh, yeah. For the old man, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> or, <laughs> or, or bleep cancer, yeah. Or, or yeah, cancer. bleep cancer. Uh, either one of those, I, I think that's that's pretty you know, special it's, too, because it adds context to what I know. Like a lot of Falcons fans saw that moment, and they're like, "Oh, like that's great," but now you can but now you know that and yeah. what it really means. Yeah. Um, man, okay. Question. I love all those answers. Question number two: Who was your favorite player growing up? And this could have been in any sport. Yeah. It doesn't have to be football. I mean, it could be. Marshawn Lynch. Marshawn, oh, really? Yeah. Oh yeah, hands down. Oh. Yeah, just watching his highlights, it was literally just just like pull it up and just like freaking tank. Like, <laughs> oh my gosh. The 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 uh, the beast quake run when he was with the oh. Seah Seahawks. Oh, insane. insane! That's my favorite insane. play in any sport ever. It's absolutely. I mean, the guy just doesn't go down. Um, just doesn't go down. So <laughs> that's a good one. Um, how about? Uh, and it doesn't have to be anime just because we talked about it, but is there a TV show or a movie that you are that that you want to recommend? <laughs> recommend to the people. <laughs> Good hell. <laughs> um, 
if you haven't seen One Piece, it's a grind. Mm. It's a grind. Mm. It's uh-huh. over like a thousand episodes. That's that's super good. That's really good. Mm. Um, Attack on Titan. That's a classic. Um, or that's a, not really a classic, but it's a that's a really good one. Hmm. Tokyo Avengers is a good one. One Punch is a good one. <laughs> I'll give you, I'll give you list, yeah, list. Oh, man. yeah. We, that's what we need is like we need just like all of the the like anime recommendations mm. like Ooh, from Game of Thrones. Game yeah. of Thrones, of course. Yeah, yeah. that, that one's yeah. And then Valhalla. Yeah, I've seen that one. No, too, but that's that's an anime. No, oh. Greenland. No, yeah. Greenland. <laughs> Vinland Saga. Okay. Vinland Saga. Seen that. That's it. That was, that's, it. that's pretty good. Second season okay. 50-50, though. So there are, <laughs> uh, there are lots of them. We, we're running up against time here. Um, oh, you, what did you want to be when you grew up if you couldn't be a football player? It was a... As a kid? Yeah. Yeah. A doctor. Oh. That's a good one. But then, in high school... I took anatomy, and I couldn't remember anything, so I was like, yep, that's out of the bag. So, so, new dream. Uh, new dream. But then I um, wanted to go into counseling, counseling counseling, or social work. Oh, I'm pretty cool. good with kids. so nice. That's good. And then last one, uh, and we're going to get you out of here. Uh, if you had a superhero power, what would it be? <sighs> Teleportation. Teleportation, that's mm. mine. That's a good one. Dang it. Never sit in traffic ever again. Oh, ever again. I'm out of there. <laughs> <laughs> Just like this. <laughs> I'm out. And then done. And this podcast is now whew, and then done. Guys, thank you so much for joining the Falcons in Focus podcast presented mm-hmm. by Ticketmaster. Tyler, thank you so much, man. This, this has so been fun. such an awesome conversation. Uh, for anyone who hasn't already, please rate, review, subscribe to the Atlanta Falcons podcast network or our YouTube page which is just Atlanta Falcons on YouTube. Thank you guys so much, and we'll see you again next week. Later.